Hi, welcome back to the workshop for the second part of the Harley Benton SG kit build. And in this episode, I'm gonna be sorting out the finish on the guitar. Now, there's any number of ways I could finish this guitar, but I wanna make this really, really easy and accessible. So if someone's kind of building along with me and they don't have access to a workshop, etc., they'd still be able to do it. So to that end, I've chosen the most user-friendly products that I can think of. And what I've chosen to use is Stunning Stains from Crimson. So this is their cherry red stain, obviously, because it's an SG and their high build guitar finishing oil. Um, now, one of the main reasons I've chosen these two products is because I already had them in the workshop from another build um, where they didn't all get used up. But secondly, they are both very, very good products and not particularly expensive. And in terms of other materials used, um, it's really just sandpaper and masking tape. Um, I'm going to be using these little discs to do the sanding with um, just simply because I can buy them in packs of 100 and they come in multiple grits so it's very easy for me um, just to get all the grits I need by doing it that way. But you could use regular sandpaper, you could use wet and dry paper as well. Now before I'm going to start any finishing work I've already kind of pre-assembled this kit just kind of finger tight with all the screws just to make sure it all goes together okay and that there are no kind of major issues that are going to cause me problems down the line and I'm happy to say it all went together really really well the only bit I didn't do was put the bridge and the tailpiece studs in because I'm not quite sure I'm going to do that yet with just one tool um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um, the only thing I found that didn't really work out as it should do was the scratch plate was a little bit too big to go in between the pickup rings. Um, so that probably needs about a millimetre filing off it. Um, but also this hole that you probably can't see very well for the scratch plate was just kind of a couple of millimetres out of position. So before I do any of the finishing work I'm just going to plug this hole with a cocktail stick and some wood glue and then once that's dried I can cut it off, sand it back and then when we get to assembly I can just kind of re-drill that hole and everything then in theory should fit absolutely perfectly. but it has got this sealer on it and I need to remove this for the stain to have any chance of adhering at all. Um, if I don't get this off properly, it's gonna give me a blotchy finish. So I have got a lot of sanding to do. And as I said, I was only gonna do this with one tool. I've got a sanding block and I've got a sanding disc. I'm gonna start with an 80 pad and then I'm gonna work my way up through the grits, but I'm gonna take off the bulk of it with the rough pad so I'm left with a nice flat finish and then work through the grades just to refine that. And that's starting to go through it already. Um, this section here, I believe is down to the bare wood. There's still a little bit of the sealer in here, but I'm hoping this isn't gonna to take too long at all. Okay, so that's all of the sealer off the body now, um, right down to bare wood. Uh, that's probably taken me a little over an hour, so there's quite a lot of hard sanding involved there, but it has come up quite nice. Um, you might have seen, as I was sanding, I managed to knock the cocktail stick off. Um, I broke that but luckily it broke a little bit above the surface and I've managed to sand that flush so we'll have a look at that in a second. But with that done we now need to start moving up the grits on this. So I've started at 80 grit so the next I'm going to go to 100, 120 then probably up to 240 and maybe 320 just to get this in a position ready for staining. And we can see that repair has come out really, really nicely. So that's perfect now for re-drilling when we get to assemble this.
Okay, so this has all been rubbed down now to 320 grit. Um, it's nice and smooth. I'm not totally convinced I've done with the sanding yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is put the first coat of stain on and I'm going to have to kind of go back over this with some really fine paper anyway once I've done that because the moisture in the stain is probably going to raise the grain a little bit. And at that point we can tackle any kind of inconsistencies in the finish. So I'm just going to put some rubber gloves on because I don't want to stain my hands red. And all I'm going to do is I've got some tissue paper, a liberal amount of stain onto the paper. And I'm doing this well away from the job, just so if I spill any, I don't spill it onto it. Now, literally just going to apply this all over the body. Okay, so what I've just done there is I've just given it a quick coat with the stain and then I've just used the damp tissue over the whole thing and that just helps to even out the stain because um, it was a little bit blotchy when I first started to put it on but it's now kind of much more even. So I'm going to turn this over in the vise on its little painting stick and just do exactly the same on the back surface. Okay, so this has been left to dry for probably about 40 minutes now um, and it's dried right out but you can you can feel that this is nowhere near as smooth as it was before we put the first coat of stain on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of 600 wet and dry and we're just going to very gently just knock that grain back down nice and smooth. So I'm going to do that on the rest of the body, then it's just a case of getting the gloves back on and putting another coat of stain on. Okay, so while the stain's drying on the body, we can take a look at the neck. Now, I'm not going to stain this. Um, couple of reasons. Firstly, I quite like the look of the maple um, and secondly, I'm kind of guessing that it would stain up a different colour than the body so you'd have two different shades of cherry red. So I'm not going to go with that. However, I don't really like the plain white um, face of the headstock so I am going to stain this but I'm going to stain this black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand the whole thing down not to get this sealer coat off completely. Um, I've done a test on the heel area where I sanded it and then put some finishing oil on and it adhered really nicely um, and it's kind of made a, a good finish on there. So I'm going to do that on the rest of the back of the neck um, but I am going to sand the front of the headstock down quite a bit to get rid of as much as possible and stain that black before I go about putting the finishing oil on. So for this I'm simply going to start with some 180 paper. And we're just going to key this in really. Okay, with that done, I'm just going to go in a bit rougher on the front. So I've got some 100 grit here. Now that feels like it's back to the bare wood. Um, we'll soon find out when we try and put the stain on. But before I do that, I'm going to mask everything on the neck off that I'm not staining. with the neck fully mummified um, we'll just get some stain onto this headstock area. <coughs> it's just a case of rubbing it on. Okay so while the stain is drying on the headstock we can start to get the finished coats onto this body. Um, like I said earlier I'll be using this high build finishing oil from Crimson. Um, I'm looking to probably put five or six coats on this to get the finish I need and 
you're looking at about two to four hours between coats. So it's going to be a fairly lengthy job to get this done. Um, but it is quite warm at the moment here, so I'm thinking between two and three hours each coat should be enough. Um, and simply all I'm going to do, get some gloves on because you don't want this on the skin. I've just got another piece of soft cloth. And for your first coat you can put this on quite liberally because it will soak in. It's just a case of rubbing it on. A generous coat. And as you can see, it is starting to move some of the colour around a little bit. Which isn't a bad thing, because it will just mean it, it levels out any inconsistency in the colour. Okay, so I've left this stain for a few hours now, and I'm hoping it's going to be properly dried out. So I'm just going to strip off all this masking tape and see how clean a line we've managed to create. And it's actually not too bad, there's a tiny little bit of bleed through um, and there's a bit that's come through onto the tune holes onto the back of the headstock. Um, so what I'm going to do to sort that out is just kind of scrape the edge around here with a razor blade to get rid of that um, and then just sand this little bit out. Okay so that's that's cleaned up really nicely now, happy with the with the line between the, the black and the plain maple. So now it's just a case of masking this back up again and getting some oil onto it. And I'm also just going to put one of the neck mounting screws loosely into one of the holes just so I've got somewhere to hang it up from. And now it's just a case of giving it a final clean up and getting a few coats of oil onto it. And for at least the first coat I'm going to use a separate piece of tissue for the face of the headstock. Try and minimise any bleed through of this stain. So I've pushed on with this and in the end I've given the body about five coats of oil and the neck three coats. I haven't really filmed any of it because it's exactly the same process as for the first coat. You just wipe it on, leave it for a few minutes to set up a little bit and then buff it with a soft cloth. But I think it's given me a really, really nice finish. It's not particularly shiny but there is a little bit of a gloss to it. Um, and I think the colour is very, very representative of kind of the faded tea style um, of SG that Gibson do. So very happy with the body. I think that's come out really, really nice. So that's the finishing complete. So there's nothing left to do now but to put this guitar together. So that's going to be the subject for the next episode, which will be coming along very, very soon. I hope you're enjoying this and finding it useful. If so, don't forget to leave me a like. Um, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.